Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You deserve. You deserve, you deserve the lifting of my hands to you. You deserve, you deserve, you deserve the lifting of my hands. Listen, some of you who will be ministers, when you become a minister, make sure, listen to me. I'm not speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking to some of you who will later have churches and ministries. Refuse to be like other people. You may be strange, you may be uncommon, you may be criticized. But make sure you walk with God consistently. Don't just try to do things because people do them. Don't just try to say things because people say them. It is they that are led of the Spirit that are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. Verse 17. If you are there, say amen. amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who giveth life to the dead and collect those things which are not as though they were. This is talking about Abraham now. Who is Victoria? Victoria. Victoria, come. Who against hope believed in hope You had a dream yesterday night and a dog was chasing you. Who is that person? You were running to an extent that when you woke up, it was affecting you. Please, who is the person? I'm just flowing as the Lord is showing me. Please make sure you come out. Let's finish the scripture, please. We're out of time. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations? A lady from Katsina. Is she here? Katsina. Who? Come. Whatever you came to find, you will find it tonight. Coming all the way from Katsina. Look at me. The Lord will do something in your life tonight that will surprise you. Hmm? Can I pray for you? Thank you, Jesus. Hold my hands, both of your hands. Jesus, do something in her life. Let an anointing come upon you. May it set you on fire. 
the presence that you cannot understand I pray I bless you with a hunger for his presence I bless you with the spirit of prayer and supplication I bless you with the spirit of might may you be strengthened these hands I'm holding will go back and you will do terrible things in righteousness I pray for you and even that yoke of delay upon your life is lifted it's lifted take as many of the messages and take it back to Katsina this was your intention the Lord will satisfy your heart in Jesus name who against all hope verse 18 believed in hope you know why they are bowing look at this let me explain something to you so that some of you don't just think this is idolatry listen they are not bowing to me are you listening to me bring the lady who is shouting outside they are not bowing to me this is what I want you to understand they are bowing to the government that is represented in this place for the Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus is it not written in your Bible that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess with everything come yours is a fire you are not oppressed look at me a fire will come upon your spirit your eyes will open let the veil be opened in the name of Jesus a fire will run from your right leg down to your chest It's an impartation of grace for this has been your hunger you came with a hunger Lord Jesus visit her in the mighty name of Jesus you will walk in a mighty healing anointing you will do terrible things in righteousness I call for the fountain from within your spirit let there be a breaking of the outer man and the release of the spirit we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout let's continue I must establish what I'm trying to do tonight I really wish that we have a lot of time someone outside will shout heavily under the anointing please when when that person shouts, let me have the person here. Just the power and the fire of God at the same time will come upon the person outside. When that happens, let me see the person. Let's continue. 19, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. 20, are you there? Let's read together. One to read. You can look up. It's projected. One to read. Through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Next verse. Stop. Just the first four words. One, two. One more time. One more time. One more time. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me. This is not a message to Koinonia. This is a message to the body of Christ. And I pray that it will go far. The same finger that has taken our messages beyond us. Let that invisible hand take this message. Beyond the borders of this nation. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost began to speak to me. How that how that 
many believers, listen please, are unable to walk in the reality of the power and authority of the word because of unbelief. And many believers have not yet come to a point where you are convinced about the truthfulness and the reality of the word of God. We sing songs that talk about the power of God. We sing songs that talk about the grace of God. We sing songs about the things that God has done and what he can do. We make seeming confessions of faith. But embedded in our heart is a stronghold of unbelief. And the Holy Ghost began to communicate a lamentation in my spirit that the body of Christ is walking in great unbelief. Great unbelief. Our capacity to trust the word of God enough such that we can allow it to rule our lives. Such that we can stake our lives at the integrity of the word is what is wanting in the body of Christ. That's the person. Bring the person. There is a level of realness. Please look at me. There is a level of realness. It's not just one person. It was an instruction to one person. But the hunger of another person is going to make the person catch the fire. So it will be two people. There is a realness. There is an authenticity about the reality of the spirit. Listen, there is an authenticity about the reality of the kingdom life. That if you shatter the walls of unbelief, it will bring you into a solid experience. Where you are persuaded that the things that have been written are true. There is a conviction, a solid, grounded, spiritual conviction that comes upon your heart. You know that you know that you know. You enter the realm I call the Sabbath of faith. The Sabbath of faith. The rest of faith. You're not trying to doubt. You're not trying to make yourself believe. It has become your present day reality. This is the experience that is lacking in the body of Christ. Let me tell you what we need in the body of Christ. It's not new messages. There are explicit messages. Just switch on your TV. There are all kinds of revelations that come. But what we lack is the ability to stay. Come back. God is not done with you. Look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. He's not done with you. Just look at my eyes. The ability to be so convinced about the reality of the truth of God's word is one of the highest dimensions that a man can stand in the spirit he said Abraham and being fully persuaded being fully convinced there is a depth of conviction about spiritual realities even those that preach great messages that message has not changed them there is a conviction this is a pulpit. There's no message that would change me from knowing that this is a pulpit. There is a rest. I believe. I am persuaded. There are impartations that are just going on because this is a strong message from the heart of the spirit to the body of Christ. 
Let me tell you something. Demons are not afraid of crowd. That's the reason why through diabolic powers you can get crowd. Demons are not even afraid of powerful words. And the seed is the word. When it was falling on the soil, Satan didn't mind because he knew some would be a waste. Do you know that Satan is not afraid of the word of God? What Satan is afraid is your reception of the word of God such that it becomes living and active. This is what makes him afraid. For even the demons know that Jesus is Lord and they tremble. But it does not change them. Are you listening to me? Oh, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is this and that. We confess it. We have Bible studies explaining certain things. I've been given authority over snakes and scorpions. There is no conviction. Adolf Hitler came out and he believed that the Jews should be annihilated. Based on whatever revelation, he had a solid conviction and he lived his entire life till death attempting to carry out that agenda. Listen, the world is ruled by men of conviction. Satan has a solid conviction that one day he will dethrone God and that conviction keeps him alive day and night. Regardless of the number of miracles that happen in a crusade ground, Satan has never gone back to give himself worry and ask the demons to retreat. Conviction. If you will believe half of the revelations you know, if you become convicted by their reality, it will change you. Every time I have the opportunity to go and share the word of God, people invite me and they say we are expectant. That's the text they write to me. And then I'm wondering, you are expectant, what are you waiting to see? And they begin to invite their friends. Oh, Joshua Selman is coming. It's going to be a powerful meeting. Have you realized that the most powerful messages that have been preached have lacked the ability to produce the effect that those messages were supposed to carry? We preach powerful messages, solid messages. Many of you believe you are anointed. You believe in the anointing. But you will soon find out that you are just informed that you are anointed. It has not yet become a conviction. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Who against all hope believed. And this is the cry of the spirit. There are many things God wants to release to people. There are many dimensions that God wants us to walk. Listen, I write to you, O oh, excellent Theophilus, of all the things that Jesus began to do and teach. Do and teach. We do not have a performance that solidifies our convictions. Many of you are here and you are hearing this word. You are seeing all the miracles and the signs and the wonders. A laughter will come by the spirit. I'm hearing it in the realm of the spirit. A laughter will come by the spirit. And this is a sign. A laughter will come by the spirit. This is not the laughter. There are many sounds. There is a laughter. It's purely by the Holy Ghost. Please just flow with me. This is not a normal, this is not your church. When you come for koinonia, just take away your intellect because it will insult it a lot. There is a laughter. Let's continue. There is a laughter. These things are signs and wonders. I pray that as you see and watch and hear these things, that the Bible will come alive to you. 
and you will know that this is not just some religious things for all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost holy men moved by the Spirit began to write these things and for as many who will believe it and walk in the conviction he is alive and active watching over his word to perform it that's the laughter outside that's the laughter outside please bring the person Lift your Bibles, everybody. I'd like you to say after me in the name of Jesus. I believe that the Holy Ghost inspired holy men to write this. And that the truth of God's word is contained in this. Wherever I see it and read it, I will understand and I will believe. Do you know I'm going to say something that will surprise you. The Holy Ghost told me this and it rattled my theology. He said there is only one reason why prayer and fasting was designed in the Bible. Prayer and fasting was designed to attack only one limitation, unbelief. That's all. Hmm. I've read many scriptures that talk about many things that prayer and fasting does. But when you study in the spirit, you will find out that at the heart of everything is unbelief. They could not cast the one with the epileptic spirit. And Jesus said it was because of unbelief. He said, however, this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. That means prayer and fasting opens up the reality of God to you. And when God is opened up to you, unbelief, there is a stronger conviction than what your optical eyes and your ears can hear. And based on that, unbelief melts away. You must not have a vision to conquer unbelief. You must not have a vision and a dream. There is an activity of the spirit. For it is God who is at work in us. Both to will and to do. Are you persuaded? Oh, I'm above. We can shout it in church. This is just empty noise. If it does not come from a depth of conviction. How do I know we are not convicted? Because at every given time. We throw away the things that are supposed to govern our life. And we begin to run for something else. As though the word were not true. The Bible talks about men who through faith subdued kingdoms. Who shut the mouth of lions. Wrought righteousness. Women who received their dead back to life and others who died without receiving the promise. They died in faith. These men were convicted. I gave this example yesterday. Let me give it again. Sweetheart, please stand up. Come. Everybody look at this lady. 
Is this a lady or a guy? Answer me. Is this a lady or a guy? If I look at you right now and I'm a medical doctor and I convince you, will I be able to convince you? Why? You are persuaded. Are you trying to claim being a lady? Are you trying to work it out? You have entered the Sabbath of faith. It has become your present day reality. You live by that truth. I know I'm called of God. There is no message that will make me doubt it once. Are you listening to me? This is the dimension that the Holy Ghost has been shouting in my spirit that the body of Christ should enter. Because there is a religious spirit. I saw this in a vision that the Lord showed me. I didn't even know there was a spirit called a religious spirit that has been fired and sent to the body of Christ. Let me tell you what that religious spirit will do. Men who are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. Hallelujah. I was going to minister to one lady. God bless you, my dear. Something happened to me. They brought a lady to me to pray for her for deliverance. And while I began to minister to this lady, the spirits in her began to manifest and they were shouting. They wouldn't stop. Just shouting and talking. And I just decided to keep quiet and listen. The devil is a liar. But under the presence of God, everything tells the truth, including him. Everything. For light cannot stand in darkness. And this lady began to shout and this is what she said. Of course, not her, but these wicked spirits. That there is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness that is being released against the body of Christ. And then the lady just shouted, or the demons now. They just shouted. They said, switch to, is it code 507 something? And then the next thing she just turned. That this thing is a code that had been existing right from the days of Pharaoh. And he said, man of God, you are hearing me. Let me tell you. He said, remember when the children of Israel, this is a lady who normally does not even know half of that scripture. This is the spirit speaking. Attempting to challenge me. Said, do you know that in the days of Pharaoh, when he told the nation of Israel, when the nation of Israel came and Moses came as a deliverer, he said the moment the word of deliverance and healing came, what happened? Pharaoh said, is it not because they are idle? You see that? Is it not because they are idle that they can have the time to do this? What is the strategy? He said, occupy them. Are you getting the strategy now? O give them more work. Let them be more involved that they will be carried away. This was the same spirit that was at work in Martha. Jesus came. There was Mary and Martha. Martha was occupied. And Jesus looks at Martha and he said, Martha, Martha, you are upset. You are worried. You are occupied. This is the spirit. It's a religious spirit. It has been released upon the body of Christ. Ministries are just adding programs. They think it's advancement. This is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness. Occupying more people so that they are carried away. More departments are being formed. More things, activities. This is the same spirit that distracts men. Matter, matter. You are worried and upset about many things. He said one thing is needful. In other words, many activities and ceremonies that we do in the body of Christ are totally useless because they are not part of the things that God designed to bring man into his prophetic agenda. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So the consolation is crowd. The man of God is convinced that there is a crowd inside and outside. Thank God for that. But let me tell you the truth. There is a degree of conviction we do not have. Every time I say this, people think I'm being critical or judgmental. Many of the people that come here and suddenly right where they are, the demons begin to leave. 
Many of these people go to churches on Sunday. What is happening to our churches? I say this with a sincere heart of love. There are many activities. People hold the mic under the influence of demons and sing. And the pastor who is teaching about the gift of the spirit cannot even discern. Yet he calls himself a prophet. Something is wrong. Persuasion. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that no man can take my life. I'm convinced about this. Not a man born by a woman. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, I set before you life. See, every time you are listening to God's word, whether it's through reading it, listen please, or through listening to a message. You were there the day I was praying for the lady. What happened when a koinonia message was played? I don't mean to brag these messages. Listen, I saw something that surprised me. I will be the last man of God to try to exalt myself for any message above another. But there were worship songs that were playing. And this, this lady was just lying down under demon spirits. Nothing happened. Quietly just lying down. The moment we switched, just one, the worship, suddenly what happened? Under the influence of the demons, she ran and went and switched off my television. Is here. This is some, and then we were sitting. The next thing we saw this lady carry my table knife. If not because Kenny held her, they would have said I killed somebody there. What did these demons hear? Many of you wonder why the messages are spreading. It's not a man. There is there is grace. There is no what I'm saying is not spectacular. This is not the first time you are hearing this. But there is a spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are coming from a depth of persuasion. I'm not speaking theory. That which I have seen, that which I have heard, that which our hands have handled. Look at me. Don't go. God isn't done with you yet. Please just let them. Because there is a river flowing in this place. Someone wrote that song, Let the River Flow. There are many worship teams in many churches. The church is a desert and they are singing, Let the River Flow. Listen, God is not happy with this. Let me tell you, this is a very serious message. A hypocrite is one who claims he understands the reality of a thing. But it's not working in the experiential reality of that truth. And would go to just one meeting and sit down and see what is being done. They will hear just one scripture and that scripture will become life in them. And they will begin to walk in its reality. But right now we have a lot of things. People who believe God. There are people, I preach this somewhere. On Sunday, Lord we love you. Lord we bless you. Lord, you are faithful. There are challenges in their lives. By Monday, somebody calls them and says, there's one place. The Holy Spirit is already telling you that this is not a godly place. But what happens? It tests your persuasion. You say, well, I will go so long as the man is called a pastor. But the Holy Ghost has told you. But now you choose to look at the things that are going on in your life. Can I tell you something? If the body of Christ does not strengthen her persuasion about kingdom things, we will not last. Are you listening to me? Because Satan has mastered the art of using your senses to dwindle your convictions. But Abraham, when he was a hundred years old, considered not the deadness of his body. Both of them had passed any stage where reproduction and childbirth is possible. Bishop Oyedeko, I listened to a message by him recently. And the Lord told him that between now and the 28th of July, every single 
living faith church will double their congregation now you may criticize him and say what in the world is this that means there will be massive salvations convinced do you know that you're coming for koinonia tells that you are convinced that service will hold is that correct imagine if you remained at home and you told somebody just come and find out uh -uh. you were convinced when you were climbing the bike the bike was going with you you didn't doubt for once what if the service does not hold this is called conviction we are not persuaded about spiritual things when you lay hands on the sick what is happening to your spirit do you truly realize that something is leaving you to step into the person when you are speaking to someone under the influence of devils what is happening to you the bible says and the lord walking with them the lord is walking with joshua selman i'm convinced can i tell you something it is your degree of persuasion and conviction that will open doors for you in the spirit is ada here aaron when he comes let me know praise the lord say after me i'm persuaded everybody say it i'm persuaded my brother the guy in yellow please come my sister you with purple come please come quickly i want we're going to pray shortly i want to communicate the thing that is burning in my spirit come 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 have you given your heart to jesus christ do you read your bible regularly do you believe what is written there everything is it true has it been working in your life tell the truth everything is not true i'm not embarrassing you but i'm telling you that if you will take this word and believe it my dear how are you do you read your bible very well do you believe it have you seen the things that are written there happen in your life not yet it will become true in your life and this is my prayer my brother may you experience listen look at me if you are experiencing what the bible says are you listening to me in reality you will not be able to move from here to your house people will run over and hold your clothes and try to tear it if the word of god is truly working in your life people will run over themselves are you hearing me it's not working it's not working just believe me if two dead people are raised here right now according to the integrity of god's word next week from 12 o'clock if you come you will stand in second equa is that true is that true you do not know the power of activating the word of god to walk in your life there is so much god bless you bless you my brother look at me are you embarrassed i pray that god will cause you to walk in this truth you know why i called you because you will walk in it god will use you and even you that's why i called you to use you hmm? god bless you hallelujah that's why i sang that song jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you let me ask you a question look at me if someone were to suddenly carry a gun right now and appear in front of us a real gun not a toy hallelujah and wants to spray that gun on everybody beginning from me or let's assume there's somebody in this crowd now that was sent to come and shoot me or kill me at that point are you still persuaded that i shall not die 
but live to declare the works of the Lord. Many of you are just saying yes. I've seen armed robbers on the road. I tell you the truth, no man born of a woman, no man born of a woman would be able to take my life. I do not live by the sword. I will not die by the sword. For my Bible, to see, the part of the word that you believe is the part that will work for you. Are you listening to me? The part of the, that section of the Bible that you take as true is the one that will work for you. I'm speaking by revelation. There is a spirit that stands behind a man that holds a gun. No mortal man has the audacity to do that. There is a spirit. And if you look at the man, you will be afraid. But that spirit can bow to the name of the Lord. If somebody looks at you and says, Sam, I am going to a herbalist for you. Many of us panic and say, hey, 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 please, Bishop, stand. Somebody said uh, yesterday, conviction, conviction, conviction. Whoever predicts your downfall is wasting his time. For your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Listen to what you are saying. You've not even listened to it. It's built on what? And what? What does that mean to you? On Christ the solid rock I stand. See, this is the reason why I love Christ's embassy a lot. For this singular reason. They are men who are persuaded. Are you listening to me? When I'm talking good about a ministry, I mention their name. When I'm flogging out issues, I don't mention names. When you see the way an average Christ embassy person prays, you know they believe in what they are doing. Many of you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You pray in tongues, but you are not yet convinced of its ability to change you. So your praying in tongues is of none effect. You waste six hours, ten hours, yet you see churches that do night vigil every week, but they are not changed. But that's not true. Because scripture cannot be broken. Have you had people say, I've been believing God for the past 10 years. I've been believing God. When are you going to rest in that reality? I have been believing God. And God didn't do anything. Therefore, I will change my mind. You never believed in the first place. You never believed. Are you listening to me? You never believed. Because those who are, belie who are believers can die without receiving the promise and not change their convictions. To death, Bin Laden did not say anything else. Even when they had captured him, he would have quietly said truly from today. Let me tell you that all this Bin Laden is the old one. This is a new person. He rather die than dwindle his conviction. Many of us are not convinced. There is no demon. There is no spirit that will stop the advancement of ENI. If you ever saw a spirit in a vision, it will stop from that vision. It will never happen in this realm. I assure you. There is no spirit. This is not because we are bragging. The hands that lifted us will uphold us till the end. We will not be afraid. For the Lord is our light. And the light of our life. And we will not be afraid. This is what I believe in myself. That the hands that lifted me. Will uphold me till the end. Let me tell you. If you are waiting one day to hear. That ah, Joshua Selman has fallen. That's only a dream. If you ever see it, it's a Nigerian film. Because the Bible says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. There is, see this is not boasting. It's persuasion. 
Adeboe went somewhere and there was a plot by a woman. They had arranged a woman who would come and jump on him naked so that they would snap it and put it on paper. How many of you know that if you throw a great man down, you who threw that man will take his position. You will suddenly become famous while the man goes down. And while he was going, the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Listen. The Holy Ghost spoke to him. He said, carry your wife. <laughs> he said, carry your wife. And you know how he talks. He said, he told his wife, let's go, please. And when he went to the hotel room, he stayed there. And they were ready. The camera person and this, when they knocked the door, he wanted to go. The hand that lifted him will keep him till the end. He was about to go, but the Holy Ghost constrained him and he told his wife to go and open the door. The moment she opened the door, there was this lady only to discover that it's a woman. How will you pose that? That one thing would have wrecked, redeemed and wrecked the whole world to its foundation. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was speaking. He said he was in his hotel room when a lady knocked his door. He said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. Immediately, he opened the door. That's how she stripped herself. He said, he looked at her. And in his mind, he was saying, is this how I will end? Is this how everybody who has looked upon me? But there is a hand that lifted him. It will uphold him till the end. Are you persuaded that God can keep you? I've shared with you my story. I was in worry when a lady came and knocked my door. Ah! I opened this door. This lady was practically naked. There was nothing left there. When I saw this lady, I thought about you. I thought about God. I thought about my parents. I thought about my destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. He leads me to the city up above. He leads me. There are many of you, listen, when you get convinced, Satan will sit down and plot something against you. And while they are plotting it, God is using them to construct a ladder. This is how you will walk upon them to a new level. And they will say it was not part of the plan. For if they had known this, they would not have crucified. If Satan had known that what he was doing was sowing a seed, he would move everybody to stop Jesus from dying. You are not persuaded. That's why what you are going through is killing you. You're already offended. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you face diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. And let patience have its full cause. Men of dexterity and stature. This is what we lack in the body of Christ. Men who fall like a leaf. Men without conviction. A husband does not come. You're already panicking. They say there's a service somewhere. You say, please, can you take me there? Oh, God, send a prophet. This husband must come. I give God three months. There is no rest. You have not entered the Sabbath of faith. When you enter that point, you understand. I believe. I'm a believer. I'm telling you. When I get up in the morning, I thank God. I don't know what happened through the night, but I know I thank God. Only God knows the unseen battles, day and night. Only God knows the meetings that go in hell every time to stop this meeting every Friday. But we are still living as if Satan does not exist. This is called dominion. Many of you are afraid. Every time God anoints you, you are afraid. You are afraid of ladies. You are afraid of scandal. Every little thing, you want to explain yourself to everybody. Do you not know that there is a hand that took you? A bike man, I took a bike today. And I was trying to, I gave the man 1,000 naira. And he could not give me change. 
because he did he, well he had changed but it was all his money 20 20 naira 50 50 naira i told him i said sir how can, i told him take this 1000 when you get changed bring it back he looked at me and i said all this money if you give me where will you have change he said the god that gave me this one will give me again ha i said just shame on you shame on you you are coming to preach this night you should have known that you should have collected that money and blessed him and say it is within my power to call forth greatness to you and melchizedek blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham there are many men of god that declare over people but what they are doing is just a religious benediction if you truly are convinced do you know that if somebody just shakes you something will leave you into that person i'm not talking about falling down someone will shake you and just find out that doors he did not bargain for is opening up this is what i want you to become men and women of conviction many of you fall like a leaf this is why somebody will come to sleep with you you know that the bible says flee fornication say it after me one more time louder say it until something in your spirit happens you enter the car no conviction you cross fly over no conviction until you find yourself in Novo hotel in abuja and the man says this is the place say really no conviction no conviction or when it's time for exam you look at question one greek question two aramaic question three hebrews your neighbor says, all right, let me just help you. Even God understands. At that point, the Holy Spirit brings all the scriptures you know should encourage you. But at that point, you think of my father. What will I tell my parents? How can I spill over? Will they know? Are you not merciful, oh God? What is your degree of conviction? There are some of us when you carry your tight. This is how you are frowning. You are just coming. Just you are selling myself. All these people, this coin on your people. Let me just do it. At least my roommates knows that they bless me. Stretch forth your tight, Father. Thank you. Yes, and take your thing. No. You are not convinced. Whenever your state comes to give you scholarship and they go before um, guidance and counseling, you go there rejoicing. Even if you have not eaten. The substance of things you hope for. The evidence. The moment you see the officer, you start laughing. Say, today, now, today, I will eat. You, in your mind, you have finished cooking. This is conviction. No amount of rain will stop you from leaving that place. You are not going. You are persuaded. But why is that not happening to your Christian experience? Many of you say, oh, I'm one with the Holy Spirit. But is his reality at work in your life? Do you hear him? Does he lead you? Because there are many of us that have made too many stupid decisions in our lives that convinces us that the Holy Ghost is not at work. I know we are all growing, but where it becomes perpetual and continuous, uh -uh, something is wrong. Are you listening to me? One more time, lift your Bible. Say, I believe in God and I am convinced that the issue of my health has been settled. The issue of my finances has been settled. The issue of my protection has been settled. I am a success. I'm not a failure. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Koinonia, look at me. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believe this. Believe this. We are wasting our time here if you don't believe this. Are you listening to me? Believe it. This word will not fail you. This is the word that brought Koinonia to being. You were not here. The word took you from where you were and brought you here. This is the word. I would die believing this word. I'm persuaded. 
if nothing else ever happens in my life, I believe it. There is no meeting that I will go to that God will not do great things. I'm not trying to believe it. It has become my reality because I have become a portal for God to find expression. This is my conviction. This is my conviction. My hands are blessed hands. I believe it. If I shake you, you are blessed. I'm telling you, if I call you blessed, you are blessed. My word, it, see, I give voice to the word of God in the spirit. I can call things that be not. I can program things that are in time and eternity to come and synchronize. I can forward things in your life by the power of the word of God. And Elisha said, O oh king, let Naaman come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Elijah was so convinced, he was laughing at the prophets of Baal. If it was me, while Baal was busy struggling, I'll be praying, oh God, please don't disgrace me. I will be in a, in a moment of worship. Elisha was laughing. When you pray, you don't pray for the food to enter your mouth. You are convinced and you are persuaded. Even when you are lying, you believe that your voice box will still speak out that lie. You are persuaded. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. Lord, you are able. You're more than able. Yes, I know you are. To handle everything that comes my way. You are able. More than able. Sing it from your heart. To make me what he wants. To make me. Listen to what you are saying. You're able to make me what you want me to be. You're able to take me where you want me to go. You're able to show me what you want me to see you're able to teach me what you want me to know listen be persuaded your parents tell you there is no school fees you say i know my bible says the part of a just is as a shining light you may be a madman Give voice to the word of God. Activate it in your spirit. Believe it. Don't be weak. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He counted him faithful. Do you count God faithful? Every little thing believers chicken out every little challenge they run if you if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small job said though he slay me i am convinced yet will i praise him he said i know my redeemer leave it are you convinced You trusted God for four point something. You checked the board. You saw 1.5 with four carryovers. And so what now? And so what now? Now you turn aside and say, God, look at what you have done. Are you really strong that way? You are not convinced. We have many Christians who are not convinced. I'm telling you, your conviction is small. 
and if you do not strengthen your conviction it will dwindle if i have no food to eat right now let me tell you what i will do i will hold my stomach and i will walk up and down my room and i'll say lord i bless you i know my redeemer lives that's the song i will sing i know Listen, that's what you must see. If I can get you to a point where you are persuaded, I tell you every message you hear will become living and active. There's too much destruction in our churches. Many messages, many series, no conviction. And so we cannot walk in the reality of it. T.L. Osborne, great man. See, Paul, Peter said, such as I have, at what point did he know he had something? Because when Jesus called him, he didn't have anything. That means there was a day, there was a time when he knew he had something. Everybody say, I have something. I have an anointing. Please say it, I have an anointing. I am not weak. I am not small. I'm strong in Christ. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm favored. The favor of God compasses me as a shield. I may not see it right now, but I'm convinced about its reality. And the word of God will bring it to pass. Say one more time. I may not see it right now. I may not hear the news right now, but I'm convinced the job is coming. The child is coming. The breakthrough is coming. The prosperity is coming is faith this is faith this is faith there is nobody that tells us every Friday that there will be so 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 and so number of people but the protocol know that the prayer band people are praying and they are setting the atmosphere and based on that conviction they go and get cheers and bring and God is alive and active watching over his word to perform it what have you believed god for many of us you've never really believed god for anything aside from your salvation do you now see that it's possible to come out for an altar call and not be saved oh yes there are many people i tell you the truth many pastors will criticize me for this that you came out and recited altar call prayer does not mean you are you are you are, you are saved the Bible says, whosoever shall believe, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Not whosoever shall speak English. You now see why on the day of Pentecost, while Peter yet speak, he spake to men who truly opened their hearts and the Holy Ghost did not ask for the permission of any man. This is the reason why sometimes we are worshipping and God begins to do great things such as this. There is an atmosphere of faith. Many of you have surrounded yourself with nonsense that chokes away faith. Themes that dwindle your convictions. Ungodly music that dwindles your conviction. Say it does not matter. Jordan is here. His bookstore is here. Why don't you go and buy books? Why don't you sit down with the word of God? I made up my mind that my entire environment will speak faith. You don't come to my, my place and talk unbelief. I will send you out. I tell you the truth, I will send you out. Politely, but sternly, you will go out. Many of you, all you speak are languages of faithlessness and unbelief every time you enter someone's room the moment you come out you leave the person worse than you met the person ah now wow well, no food in this room koinonia care all of you koinonia people jumping jumping me and you who is better you see it you see it anybody that comes and speaks like that don't be angry don't criticize them you see that but i tell you be far from those kinds of people they will dampen your faith.
the moment God tells you, Pastor Williams, you are rising from glory to glory. You are moving from grace to grace. If I have a dream that does not look like what God has told me, I will change it. Did you hear me? Many of you think if you have a dream, I saw it, hey, 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 it will come to pass. Uh -uh. Job said, has thou commanded thy morning? A man can command his morning. We're going to rise up and we're going to pray. We're going to make declarations of faith and say, Lord, I repent of unbelief. I want to enter the Sabbath of faith where I'm convinced and nothing will move me. Rise up on your feet, everybody. When a season where God is bringing miracles, when a season where God is doing mighty things, hear me inside and outside. Believe this message because it comes from the Lord. Are you ready to pray now? Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, every spirit of unbelief in my life, let it live right now. That spirit that makes me question the truth of God's word. Every spirit, come on, challenge it inside and outside. Every spirit of unbelief, don't look at your neighbor, pray, open your mouth and pray. Your life can be better than it is if unbelief goes. Every spirit of doubt and unbelief. But I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Rekete keshekete. Rekete baka prakata. La bako prokotope. Rekete kepeko sobata balabaraba. Pray. I curse every spirit of unbelief i curse every spirit shake it take it balaraba rakata prokotope eko prosko sopetekete Make sure you are praying. Unbelief concerning my health, concerning my finances. Pray concerning your academics, concerning your marriage. I cause unbelief. I cause unbelief. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. Listen. The fact that your situation has not changed does not mean it cannot change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The fact that your situation has not changed. Listen. Make up your mind that if my situation does not change, I will not be the one to change. Are you hearing me? One of two of you will give up one day. Oh, I've been speaking for one year. I've been speaking for two years. Abraham believed God for 25 years. If it is genuine faith, there will be a performance. You are going to pray right now. You know the areas of your life where you are trusting God for breakthroughs. Please, I don't want you to keep quiet. In the next one minute, pray radically like a, like a priest. Lift your voice. Challenge your finances. Challenge your spiritual life. Challenge your ministry. Share ye the word of the Lord. Share ye the word of the Lord. 
Share ye the word of the Lord. Grace. Grace. Increase. Multiplication. Academic excellence. Academic excellence. Divine health. Longevity. God is faithful. Shake it, take it, deba karya balaraba. Rakata preke te bele de bosh. Rotos ko preke. Gapoka priata laba seketa. Lekon dos ko so ko di araba. Rabari eke te reketo krasta. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Prayer works. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. The effectual, fervent prayer. Shake it, Rakata, break it, take it, I command breakthroughs. Come on, pray for your life. It will change. Don't keep quiet. It will change. It will change. Forget about what you are seeing now. It can change. For the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are seen are temporal. The report you had is temporal. Shakata balaraba. Rakata bata. I change reports. 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 I believe the report of the Lord. I change reports. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus is the word, but you are the one that gives voice to that word. You activate it, making it potent. John said, I am the voice of one crying. I give voice. I give voice. When you begin to speak the word, you activate it to produce. It becomes living and active. Right now, you're going to pray. You're going to prophesy what you know the word of God has said over every area of your life. Don't keep quiet. Even if it's only one scripture you know. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice and prophesy. My part is as a shining light. Favor. Everywhere I go, the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. Oh, hallelujah. Favor follows me. Everywhere I go, I break forth from the left to the right. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy favor. Prophesy blessings. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above. I'm not beneath. In the name of Jesus. My path is as a shining light. My hands are blessed. I have the spirit of excellence. Pray. 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 Kotoketeke. Reketeke prokoto balaraba. Rabaka pros. Rekete kosokete. Rekete. Things are changing. Your life is changing. Your life is changing. You have authority. You have power. It's resident within your spirit. Power to change. Power to adjust. Go so take Rekete pros. Reke pros. You may be small, but you are powerful. Greater is he that is in your spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We having the spirit of faith as it is written i believe and therefore i speak i speak long life 
I speak greatness everywhere I go. Men follow me with favor. Doors are opening unto me in the name of Jesus. The anointing upon my life is increasing from glory to glory, grace to grace. You enlarge my coast like Jabez and move from glory to glory. Koinonia is rising, ever increasing, rising. New levels of power, new levels of grace. We are not small. I refuse poverty. Shake it, Kabbalah. Pray. The spirit of holiness is at work in my life. The spirit of purity is at work in my life. In the name of Jesus, I am pure. I am holy, blameless before the throne, commended by the blood of the Lamb unto Him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before His glorious majesty. Declare, declare that you may be justified. Declare, I walk in blessings. I'm favored. I'm above only. I give life to the word of God. The secrets of God are with me because I fear him. He gives me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. The Lord teaches my hands to profit. I'm above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Pray, I cause sickness from my body. Command every disease to go. Command every infirmity to leave. Command every sickness. Resist the devil. Make sure you are praying. Command every sickness in your body to check out. Headaches, go. Fever, go. 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 No inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. I walk in health. I walk in health. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body, I refuse fatigue. Command my grain to go. Command every spirit, every demon, every enchantment, every covenant, every curse, every act of divination, Take it away from your life. I set myself free. Come on, pray. I set myself free. Every cause, every activity of witchcraft and manipulation, I cause it. It cannot stand. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm blessed. I'm distinguished. I'm anointed. I'm blessed, I'm full of grace, full of power, full of wisdom. My prayer life is growing, my world life is growing. I'm becoming a champion in the spirit. I become a champion, a man of power, power in the heavens, power in the earth. The ability to change territories, miracles are wrought through my hands. Koinonia becomes a place of signs, wonders, miracles, deliverance, revelation, prosperity, excellence, character. Hallelujah. This is how kings reign. Give voice to the word of God from a depth of conviction and you will change your life. Through faith we understand 
that the walls were framed. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Everyone inside and outside hear me. If you're here and you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ, you've never been born again, you've not given your heart to the Lord, or you once committed yourself to the ways of God, but for whatever reason you found yourself distracted and you've derailed from the path of God, no one condemns you. This is a place of liberty. This is where you find rest. The Bible says, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You can't find it by yourself and nothing else can give you that rest. Right now in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, inside or outside, as the power of God convicts you, I'd like you to leave where you are and come out right now. Come to Jesus. Everyone, please clap for them as they come. Inside or outside. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you found yourself derailing please don't sit back thank you my sister god bless you god bless you my brother the lord is seeing you inside and outside please make sure you come don't sit back this is the miracle don't sit back don't sit back bring them here god bless you clap for them they are coming from outside no matter how far you have gone let me tell you god can give you a new beginning men may condemn you but i want you to know you can start and run like elijah keep clapping they are coming thank you jesus young and old don't be ashamed come come to jesus come to jesus come to jesus blessed be the name of the lord he will set you on fire like the foxes that samson set on fire and you will go and do exploits hallelujah those of you in front pray after me lift your right hand very high say after me lord jesus please keep coming my brothers say after me lord jesus lift your right hand if you are here for the salvation prayer as high as you can say after me lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i accept that i'm a sinner unable to help myself but i believe your word forgive my sins cleanse me with your precious blood i receive eternal life into my spirit i denounce sin and satan and i declare that from today forward ever and backward never satan take your hands off my life i belong to a new family right now I declare that I'm justified, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I have a new life. My past is gone. It's over forever in the name of Jesus. Now keep those hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, for everyone that comes, you will in no wise cast away. I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be the beginning of a new life. Let this salvation be genuine. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, from today I declare that every habit, every challenge, every weight and power of sin over your life is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. From today you step into a new life. You begin to experience glorious things. In the name of Jesus, every voice that speaks against you, in the name of Jesus, I declare, sister, you are healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to follow the ushers. They will have your details and we are going to follow you up. God bless you. Please celebrate these great people. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, inside and outside. If tonight is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out victoriously. We have a prayer, a prophecy, and a blessing for you. Quickly celebrate them as they come. This is your first time. You are welcome. Just find a place in front. Those outside, please just rush and come. Don't worry. Keep clapping. They are coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Coming. We 
are a chosen generation Called for to show his excellence All I require for life God has given me I know who I am Keep coming, we have to wait for you We are a chosen generation Called for to show his excellence All I require for life God has given me Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord bless every one of you. How many of you are blessed tonight? Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. I assure you, your life will never remain the same. You will go back and you will experience the presence of God, the word of God. Several things will be activated in your spirit. Your mindset, your ideologies will change in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we pray for you, I'd like you to believe we are anointed. Everyone here is full of the spirit and anointed. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and bless them. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.